What's going on, everybody? Welcome. Uh, are you ready? I figured the best way to start it would be drinking water, right? To, to, yeah, well, they can't. The, the, the people listening on uh, wherever you're listening to this uh, cannot, cannot see you drinking water. And you weren't actually a loud drinker there, so. I, I've been, I've sometimes, I fear that I have a, lo- a loud gulp. A loud gulp? Yeah. This is, uh, so mm. your concern with the volume of bodily functions is yeah. something that's come up in our friendship a lot, actually. <clears throat> you know, that's funny, actually. And I think another thing that I think about is breathing. Breathing, and I know where it comes from. Where you um, know where breathing comes from? God, I hope so. You're your late twenties, man. Our mutual friend Jake, his older brother. I was playing Grand Theft Auto Three on PlayStation Two at his house when I was like thirteen, and his older brother was on the couch, and he was like, "Why do you breathe so fucking loud?" Oh my God, <laughs> I was like, Dude. I would be so insecure for the rest of my life. I would like, I would have gone home and worked on that for the next ten years and been like. It's like that's like your that's like your superhero origin story, and you're that's like, that's what it is. I never let someone tell me I breathed loud again. <laughs> and you like went home and you're like, you practiced your breathing, and you're like, <laughs> you have like a decibel meter, and you're like, hold on, funny, damn it, too loud again. Funny you say oh. that wasn't a loud gulp, Frank. I've been practicing <laughs> for years now. Oh, you said I didn't drink very loudly. I wonder why that is. Mm. Let me tell you a little story, actually. The flashbacks. It's like a well-produced movie. Just me training. Uh, I would say that this is a good start to our podcast that we wanted to start about pretty much nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's actually about... It's a Seinfeldian podcast about nothing. My name is Frank. Uh, I actually uh, am a content creator in the Magic the Gathering trading card game sphere, uh, which I've done for about 10 years now successfully I, I think yeah and my name is frank and i've been working in magic the gathering as well and we thought that since we had such different histories and, histories, and we had nothing in common nothing in common <laughs> at that point i couldn't tell if you were just bouncing the story off me or if you were just copying what i was saying to mirror what you were that's saying. good mirroring is a really it's a really sophisticated form of comedy that no one like that no one dislikes dislikes if, if anyone someone if anytime someone mirrors someone else the person that's being mirrored is always so impressed <laughs> they're always like wow this is really impressive that you're that you're this creative so being that we come from such different fields just tell people be... who you are <laughs> <laughs> well i'm andrew and i don't have anything to do with magic the gathering i play casually and it's very fun but i ended up having a career in music where i tour managed bands that's funny i, I work... listen to music pretty casually so we're basically the same person <laughs> Hi, my name is Frank Andrew. Um, no, but yeah, so I went from tour managing bands. I worked at a record label. I manage artists and I tour again now. Um, but it's funny. We've always kind of just come back to our banter and we kind of loved the idea of it was fun that we don't work in the same profession and that we could just banter. Right. But that also that we have a lot of experience in these things and we're kind of successful in our own in our own spheres. Um, and there's a lot of overlap to to our personalities despite that despite that you're in music i'm in games yeah like we always end up talking about that like every time we get together because it's it's, fascinating i think we're good examples of like i think we're good examples of like the success stories of our our industries you know what i mean like yeah well it's it's funny because like we always talk about imposter syndrome and like we're always (laughs) like uh i don't know but at the end of the day it's like well fuck we're here right we have the like it's despite the fact that we have uh the evidence to show that like we are doing well. Yeah. We still, it's like, nope, doesn't matter. They yeah. just picked me randomly and I, I could, I'm going to, they're going to figure it out any day. And at least for me, like, I, hell yeah, I made it this far. But like, I look at other people that I look up to and I'm like, damn, I have a lot of work. So it's probably, I mean, have you tried to, uh, I don't know, fucking breathe lower? Cause Jesus, it's so loud, dude. <laughs> I thought the seven B's would cover Why it. Why do you breathe so loud, man? It's unbelievable. <laughs> I can't. Um, but yeah, so we just, I don't know. We just, we always end up talking about nothing. I have where all my friends where it's a show about something, which is great, but sometimes it feels like it would be nice to talk about nothing. I just want to go into a podcast and be like, Oh no, we went off topic. Who cares? Like that yeah. was always a good feeling. Cause I was like, I had an old podcast I did, uh, but it was always magic based Yep. and it was hard to talk about my real life or like things that happened to me. Because, like, it didn't feel like that's what people were listening for. So I want to start this podcast off on the ground floor and have people know that, like, we're going to talk about our lives. We're going to talk about serious things. We're going to talk about nonsense things. 
if we're your most disappointing child of a podcast, there's no more disappointing you. If you're coming into this ready to be disappointed and not have there be There's nowhere to go but up, man. There's nowhere to go but up. That's a success story right there. Yeah. That's all I really want out of a podcast. So we're calling it the Pod Racer. No, we're not. What is it called? <laughs> it's, it's called Now This Is Podcasting. <laughs> Um, no, no, we're so we're we're experimenting with names here. We don't know. We're we're tentatively going with the working title of Franz, yep. because her, him, Andrew, and I are friends, and Franz also incorporates both the F R A from Frank and the A and D from Andrew. It's a little, it's a there's a lot going on, but it feels like a, a, a it's an easy title. It rolls off the tongue, and yep. it and it you get what it means. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it's brilliant. It's one of the best word plays. Stop it, just okay. stop it, please. And the other thing is we get to wear these goofy glasses. Right, we're... but if you're watching on uh, if you're listening, you don't get to see us wear these glasses. Right. So if you want to check it out, we uh, we we might actually record some on Twitch too. Um Well, okay, so we are together in Florida right now. Correct. That is rare. I unfortunately broke my leg on tour and ended up healer here in Florida healing. Also, it's worth noting that Andrew was on tour with Carly Rae Jepsen of all people, which yes. is kind of kind of kind of amazing. That's kind of amazing. <laughs> He's fucking classic. <laughs> God, you look you look what just What about fantastic. Carly Rae, Frank? What about? <laughs> Tell me what you think. Um, yeah, no, it, it was one of the best tours of my life. It was awesome. It was definitely the worst tour to break my leg on. I will say that. Um, but I ended up here in Florida recovering and it's dope that we get to do this together in person. But I think like I was going to say, even if we don't, even if you're not here, we can still do it on Twitch, like with our. Exactly. Like, and in all reality, I think that a show about nothing and the way that we interact and us laughing, we should stream it more than just audio. Cause I think our reactions are great too. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to brag though. I don't want to be like, Oh, we have look at these assholes. They got great listen, reactions. No one cares about that. Listen, we know they care. They watch reaction videos all the it's time. It's the best podcast but it's not the best podcast. I have no idea what that means. I don't either. I just said it. Okay. So being that it's a show about nothing, and this is the first episode, we don't really know where it's going. Did she break your leg before you, because you disobeyed her? <laughs> solid question. Solid question. I, that's the worst part. It wasn't even on site of the tour. It was just an accident. Off. So she used witchcraft then is what you're saying. That's right. She yeah. was not present, but it's still, she still managed to break your leg. That's impressive. That's right. Yeah. She put a curse on me. Wow. No, she was, she's so cool. Like we would play like settlers of Catan on like downtime and like, it was such a good tour. Such that good sounds vibes. Sweet, man. All the crew is so good. I was so. not on tour with her, so I could not say. Right. Uh, I was actually on tour with your mom though. We had a good time. Wow. Yeah. Betsy. Yeah. <laughs> Betsy Krim. What did you guys do? Uh, we were playing Settlers of Catan as well. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. She's a big Settlers fan. She settles. She settles. <laughs> <laughs> that is so Seinfeld. Be she settles. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. You're going to tell me next. You're going to tell me you don't settle. Betsy, me? Look uh, at me. I settle. Come she on. She cultivates I'll resource. settle. I love. Do you play Settlers of Catan? Settlers of Catan. Let's talk about Settlers of Catan for a second. Settlers of Catan is the game that non. It's the it's the first step up from like Monopoly. It's the game that non gamers play yes. to get into gaming. It's the first game that you can come in and be way too cocky about nothing. Yeah, but it's also like I don't know any games. Like your your parents, if you want to take them to the next level outside of like Monopoly or Clue, yeah, you'll get Settlers and you'll be like, hey, in the gaming world, this is a popular one, and then you play Settlers of Catan. But it's like enough, right? Like where it's enough where you think about the strategy and like you're like, you know what? This this game, I'm getting on this road. This. And there's nothing you can I will do a figure eight. I will do I will start straight and do you I have will this do kind a of confidence big in circle. Of course. Do I you come get into, wrecked though? I mean, yeah, I mean I'll lose just as much as I win. Okay, so it's a complete so game it's a, of chance. Oh, so it's just feign confidence then. But that's what I'm saying about the game. It's the first game of competitive level where like you know, there are certain games where you play and it's just like whatever, but like it's the first tier of competitive game where it gives people enough confidence to be like, I'm the fucking best. I can play a game. Yeah. Whereas Monopoly, it's like, it's totally random. It's literally your only decisions are whether you choose to buy the property you land on. I'm honestly pretty competitive about Monopoly. Too. Okay. Well, that doesn't make you a better person. It doesn't make me a better person, but I sure am great at Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to pay me if you land on Park Place, buddy. Wait, but okay. So as a Magic player, do you not feel like you have a competitive edge on the other less... Uh... I actually never... That's funny. I never have. Because I feel like all the game systems, the, the rules and things, the strategies that you use to win in different games are completely different. Mm. So I can go for Magic where I'm, I, I know how to win and what looks good. Even when I play a game like Hearthstone, like I'm just like, 
I don't understand why this card is good or what makes it good. Or I can't look at cards that first come out and I still can't like figure out what's fantastic or what's great. You are so much more humble than I am in that sense. Because even as a, a casual Magic the Gathering player... Well, that's just because you're a cocky piece of shit. <laughs> so... <laughs> we're over here like talking about like being like humble and like imposter syndrome and being like there's so many people that I respect above me and then I'm like I am the fucking best no but I am I don't, people come in and play against me and I'm like I'm gonna shit all over you but it's what gonna I'm be saying incredible. is anytime I play a game that isn't magic because I played magic I'm like oh I'm about to come in and strategy ever heard of it I have <laughs> I've ever heard of strategy idiot <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I, I am overly competitive and cocky about board games that I'm not qualified to be overly competitive about. I do not win them all that often, but every time I come into a game, I'm like, <clears throat> ready to get wrecked? Well, someone said MTG teaches you how important resource advantage is, though. I agree with that, but my problem with other games is that I have no idea out of the gate what resources I should prioritize. You know what I mean? Like, I know resources are important in games, but I have no idea which ones to... T I'm like, oh, is wood more important? Because it depends on the gaming system. Like, if you have a game where, like, 90% of the things are built of wood and 10% are built of concrete, not only do you need to know that ahead of time, yeah. if you're walking in, you might not know the distribution, but you also need to know if it's if those 10% that are built out of concrete, maybe those are still the ones you want to get because they're so much better. Well, more importantly, I have no idea. You I need have to, no idea. Well, it's you too need much to come in and You need to come in and know that I'm the gosh darn best <laughs> You need to come in and kiss the rings, buddy. <laughs> All right. So we had some good banter up top. And I uh, remember in the chat up earlier. Top. You up mean top. When, does, when does, what does up top mean to you? In the chat. Up top in the chat. I don't twitch, Frank. It's the same. It's the chat. You know. Oh, up on screen. On screen. Gotcha. Yeah. So there were a couple points that I really liked up there. And we then were talking. say them. Well, we have to scroll up. Oh, remember me? Was, oh yeah, I have to do the work. You're doing the computer where, side. Where are we going? We well, we were going up, and there were there was something, there was something earlier. It was when we finished the first podcast, and we were going into the second podcast, and there was something where I was like, "Oh, that'll be funny." Oh yeah, because this is where you were like trying to get the Andy was trying to get all the cat hair off him because he's like, "I don't want people to think I own cats." Yeah, it was earlier than that. <laughs> God, what a dude! What a dude! It was. We got so obscure because we were talking. Oh, you're about, talking about your favorite farts. Oh my God, your favorite farts. Yes, this is important. No, is it? Is it though? <laughs> well, this is, is a show about nothing. So yes, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of time to talk about this. I don't know if this is common, and I would like your input on this. I don't exactly know when this happened in my life, but there at a go. certain point, I started waking myself up to my own farts. <laughs> You mean like an alarm clock? Kind of. Like you would record them on your phone and set your, your alarm clock for 1230 and you not. would set the fart as your as the alarm tone? This was a a natural occurrence in my body. So as you would fart and you'd be like the, like when a dog farts and it like looks at its own ass, it's like, oh, it, like it scares itself? Not like, quite. Okay. Not quite. That is hilarious. Uh, does a rooster choose to, cr to crow? To crow? I don't think the rooster is asleep and then it randomly crows and it's like, oh, like it wakes itself is up. Is that the word crow? A rooster crow? Yeah, it's a rooster crowing. Okay. Right? Does I think a rooster, so. does the sun come up? Does a rooster have enough of a I feel like you're conscience? asking real philosophical questions. Well, but here, I'm going to come back to it. Does a rooster cho choose to uh, crow? Well, does the sun choose where to rise? Right. So the sun comes up. The rooster, it, it, it's it's natural. It's, it's nature. It's biology that tells it it's time well not the sun though the, the, well the sun comes up and, and then the it says it's like time. oh it's time to go yeah and he, he just goes are it's you just, trying to you imply know. that your body knows it's time to fart so it wants to wake you up that is exactly what i'm implying at a certain point in my life <laughs> a biological switch flipped and no. it said it is 8 a.m the sun is coming up and you're gonna start farting i'll be honest man there's no world where i can support this theory so this does not happen to you no man Okay. It has been happening to what me. What happens? Okay, let's say you have blackout curtains and you can't see the sun. Your body has no idea that the sun is rising internally. I'm thinking about this as we talk, and I think that it's more hours slept. I think that the blackout So after curtain, eight, eight hours or so, your body's like, hey, buddy, I'm going to let out a little toot for you and try to wake you up. What close. part of the part wakes you up? Is it the, is it the, the noise or the feeling well, of, the, of the flappy butt cheeks? Well... You said your body is going to let out a little fart. Right. It it's not so. little. It's not a little fart. 
So let's say eight hours. And I, I haven't, I'm talking about this with a friend. This has been something that I've only thought of to myself. Right. Now that we have a platform, we're going to talk about it as friends. Okay. I appreciate that. I'm glad we can, well, we're going to talk about it as friends, but we're also talking to it, to, about it in a, in a way the world can hear. That's right. We're going to talk about it as friends. Yeah. Okay, so what was eight that? hours. What was that? It was it was my joke. Friends. We're gonna talk about it as friends. The, pod- the name yeah. of the show. Yeah, that's the. Eh. He said the name of the podcast. <sighs> okay, so let's call it eight hours. My body says, "Hey, man, it's time to wake up." And I would say that this probably started happening to me in my early twenties. No, five years now. Wow, this you've been farting to wake yourself up for five years. About five years. What if you're with someone else? I can't. I can sort of control it. So. I'm going to sleep. Well, so check me out. Eight hours. Clock, whatever. Biological clock. Your podcast name, Frarts. Frarts. (laughs) This this started by somebody in the chat saying, I remember my wife's first or my wife's favorite fart. Yes. Well, no, it started with someone saying, what's your favorite fart? And then they said, I remember my wife's favorite fart. (laughs) And I was like, that's a solid thing to remember. (laughs) And then it was. I'll never forget. We were sitting in bed that night. (laughs) Say less. Oh, will you fart guys be more. my friend? Yes, hundred percent. Josh, thank you so much for Incredible. the friend bucks. But um, eight hours in, I wake up, and it is a big fart. And I say big fart. Let's give me a second to count. How many what? seconds? Okay, I would say two and a half. One that's a solid. Two. Yeah, that's a, three. That's a solid. Right around that. Well, like a one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Yeah, real seconds. That's a fart, so, man. I know. But, but that's also that probably felt real good too. Exactly. But <laughs> the way Exactly. The way that I explain it is uh-huh. it is harmless. It the is, fart is harmless. airy fart. It does not it's have not much a... odor, but it has a lot right. of torque. <laughs> and I'm Don't a car call person. It torque. Well, I'm a car person and they're going to need to learn about our personalities. So it, I don't know how to explain it, but it has a lot of torque. It's not a harmful fart. It, it doesn't even have as much horsepower as it does torque. It has a lot of driving force <laughs> of just air. It's a lot of PSI. Uh, yes. And that wakes me up. So then I find it to be relaxing, and there'll be a series. Like, I'll, like, let it out fully, and then I'll be completely emptied of it, and I'll start to wake up, and I'll be like, oh, I'm relieved. And then there'll be another series. And then... I've become so comfortable with them that there is no timidness about it. I just rip them. And <laughs> Wait, is this okay? Are we still talking about with another person or is this solo? This is solo, and when okay. we get to the other, well, yeah, person. but you, I would have no problem just ripping them anyway, right? Because you're alone. Sure, but like I enjoy it. Like it's it's a nice part of waking up. The best part of waking up is Folgers in my cup. Like I love farting awake. I love farting. But there's no way awake. this happens every day. It does though, except recently. Oh, has there been a disruption in the force? With the broken leg, it has not been happening. Wow. What and if you, what if this disrupted your whole your whole thing? What if this disrupted your whole system? How I, do you wake up? How have you been waking up? I've been waking up later. Oh, this is changing. I've been waking up later. Changing. And I think that like I think a broken bone healing is a very interesting thing. Like it's you can try to understand the process, but the body does what it needs to do. You sleep longer. You eat different things. It's like you're pregnant with a bone. I don't know. How, we're okay with like reading these these chat comments on the stream, right? On the on the podcast, right? It's a podcast about nothing. I would hope there's no rules. Hajigulashi says, "I farted so loud, I heard my above me neighbor stir in bed the other day." That's incredible. <laughs> That's torque. That's more torque. Mm. So you want to you want a really booming? You want a booming like a hollowed booming sound? That's exactly it. It's a hollowed. It's boom. a hollowed. The ho- I've always felt like. A, a, a rewarding fart has a hollowed sound to it. That's right. Yeah. And y- you feel it. And I don't know the broken bone thing. Like it's been. carving out its own air pocket and it's just, ex- it's like, I'm going to get out of here. It's making its go. own space. And uh, I'll get a series of those. And <laughs> this is talking alone. So morning uh, farts are stored in the legs. Someone said, maybe that's where it is. Maybe you, maybe you... <laughs> I broke my <laughs> fart chamber. It's gone. Yeah. That's what Jesus, you really ruined things. Well, so you know, uh, non-broken bones alone, I will let them go. And it's about 15 minutes of just serious. It's like, uh, 15 minutes of farting. Yeah. It could that's be a long time, dude. I know. Do you know how long 15 minutes is? Well, I mean, I'm like, that's like if of... I put on an episode of the office, no commercials, 22 minutes, 
You're going to be farting for the duration of this episode. The office is 21 minutes and it's Okay, that's more of the you that you've just upped your percentage of farting during it. But I'm saying I'm not agreeing with that. That's two snoozes on your alarm clock and I'm saying that's about right because I fall in and out of sleep. I wake is up Is it to, constant? No, I wake up to the twerky farts. 20 minutes 20 minutes duration. How many farts in that 20 minutes would you say? 3 to 4 series. How many are in a series? Between 1 and 3. They're their own chapters. Does it depend on what you've eaten the day before? No. So you can eat anything. You can Absolutely. Eat total garbage or you can eat totally healthy. They're farts of air. What I like to think mm. is that my body, it's just, it's air that I've breathed in and stored while I'm sleeping and it went to the wrong pockets and it's it's purging. That's what I think. Um, Has there been any other changes to your bowel function? Yes. And that's a great question. Great, so, great follow up. Great follow up. This is our. I just want to. I just want to be clear. This is the first episode of this podcast, mm-hmm. and we're diving right into your farts. That's great because we're marking a moment in time. We'll always go back to this episode and be like, "Oh yeah, you had a broken femur." You it's gonna talking... be. It's gonna be great when we look back and we're gonna be like, "I know the exact moment our podcast failed." It was when we talked about your farts for about twenty minutes on the very first episode, and people we, were like, "Probably not coming back to this again." We doomed it. They said, yeah. I wanted something that I could listen to that was safe and safe for work. And I, tr- I listened to my, yeah. I listened to podcasts every day at my job and my boss walked by. Is this your iTunes review the voice? Man, yeah. The man talked about his twerky farts and I did not like him. That's it. That's the review. It ends there. I That's pretty like good. Him. So I have to finish this thought though of that is alone. That's what happens. Al- oh, somebody asked, uh, the, le- uh, the bowel function. Yes. The femur and where it is broken is so close to my hip, which is then so close to the cheek. And I was so afraid to poop for the first after breaking it. So afraid that I actually held it for a whole day before the surgery. I asked the person in ER, I said, I have to poop, but I can hold it. Do I have to poop? And he said, if you can hold it, you can wait till the surgery is done. Really? And I did because I was so afraid. So yes, it has affected it. But the, I think the farts are different. Did you wait? You asked if you could hold your poop. Like you didn't know you could before then. Well, I wasn't sure if it would cause a surgical complication. Oh, so you were you were just curious in terms of like, um, in terms of the surgery. Like you inter- in terms of like if they could still operate, if you had the full bowels. They won't let so you speak. eat. You can only eat ice chips. Hmm. You can, you have to wait twelve to twenty four hours. Yeah, because you don't want to have a. a a, a so full I was chamber. saying, hi, I know I can't be full of food. Am I allowed to be full of poop? And they said, yes. So I held it. Um, and yes, it changed. It changed the bowel functions. Um, I farted the podcast out of existence. Yes. Uh, so yeah, well, alone... the, the, the stream itself died. We're still recording, but the stream itself died for a, for a moment. So people are like, oh, but now oh, we're good. It funny. looks like we're good now. Um, but yeah, so that's alone. And then yes, like that. So through that, like being with like a long term girlfriend, like. Once you get into the long-term phase, I found it funny. She hated it, but I was like, oh, oh it's funny. We're in love. And then <laughs> I, that how relationship you, ended. So before, before you guys were comfortable on that level, how long did it take you to get to be comfortable on that right. level? So if I am in bed with a girl or if I'm in a, in a situation where I'm sleeping in a guest bed or if there's somebody else in the room, I can control it. Where like the first morning fart will come and I'll, it'll kind of come and it'll be burp, burp, and I'll like wake up and I'll be like, not today. And then the series past that, I can. And it's kind of like holding a poop. or <laughs> Not today. I, and they store up. And then when I go out and when I get to where I'm going or like the bathroom or whatever, I can normally get like one good gratifying like blah, and like really torque it out. <laughs> torque it out. So I can control them. I mean, so I've had years of practice. I think in the future, whenever you and I are hanging out and one of us has to fart, we yeah. can just go and be like, I got to go torque it out. Sure. Yeah. That's our new, that'll be our new thing. Yeah. Feel so free to use that, guys. If you guys got to go to the bathroom, I got to go torque it out. Yep. It does um, sound like masturbation a bit. It does. Yeah. I think if, if someone's going to torque it out, I think they're going to That's they're actually gonna have their true, time. They're yeah. going to have a moment. Let's talk about the Impossible Burger at Burger King. Oh, I had an Impossible Burger today. I am not a big meat eater. I eat basically only chicken and turkey on occasion. Um, and I've been looking forward to the Impossible Burger because it's coming to Burger King. Big wave, big fad restaurants being more vegetarian, vegan friendly. I'm here for it. Not vegetarian, vegan, but I'm here for but it. But there's no, like it's got net benefits to everything, right? Like That's the environment, right. it's better for the environment. It's better for animals. It's better for, it's probably better for your health. I can't imagine like eating a plant-based uh, burger is not better than just eating red meat, right? Unless they're putting weird chemicals in it. Which I don't think they are. Yeah. Soy-free, gluten-free, like all kinds of, it was just great. It was delicious. 
And we liked that. We talked a lot. We uh, Oh, I realized something. I was in the kitchen feeding the pets, and I was like, you know what, I, you know what that burger was missing? I didn't get a Whopper with cheese. I just got an Impossible Whopper. Oh. There was no cheese on that bad boy. And now I just have to go back and get one with cheese. Oh, okay. I, I was going to think, like, vegan cheese. But no, you're not vegan. No, I'm not vegan. I'm just a vegetarian. I'm, I'm, right. a, I'm a pseudo-vegetarian that makes exceptions for himself. Is the Impossible Burger vegan? Yes. There? It yes, is? it is. Wait, it's the totally... bun and everything? No, no, no. Well, no, I don't know that. I think the Impossible Burger itself, the patty, is vegan. It's mm. a vegan patty. I wonder how far you could get that veganed. Oh, uh, you probably have no mayonnaise. May- no mayonnaise. Right. I imagine the, well, the bun's probably got eggs in it. Yeah, they have to, Now, well, I'm curious on that. Doesn't matter. Um, we decided You're not to a go- vegan, I'm not a vegan. No, but you're here for the cause. You really only eat chicken, True. and this was a big thing. So you text me, we talk about doing the podcast, and you say, today's the release of the of the Impossible Whopper. I'd really like to go get it. <laughs> it's been a minute since both of us have been to Burger King, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've been to Burger King for like 10 years. So we went to the Burger King off of Arcturus. What's your point? I don't know. I just liked that. We talked. It was but you were like, you were like looking right at me. You're like, <laughs> I know. go on. And I'm like, I don't know what you're looking for. Here. I was kind of ready for you to, to commend my navigating abilities because I found it off a back road. Oh, yeah. You navigated us there perfectly. I was like, wow. Even when you're cripple and your leg is in, in disarray, like you still know how to get places. And I'm, I was I proud can, of you for that. I can navigate. Am I going to be driving us tomorrow when we go to our go to our hangout? I hadn't thought about it. I was probably going to ride with AJ, but well, we'll, now we'll, that we'll figure it out. I don't, I, it's, it's fine. Either way, it's fine. Now, that's actually a funny bit for the podcast of planning plans that clearly have nothing to do with. You're listening to the podcast to be like, yo, so like 5 p.m. tomorrow. Hey, man, what are you doing tomorrow? Like when we go at 7 p.m., uh, yeah. we're going to be driving to this place in town. Like, well, who's going to drive? Yeah, we're just talking about our plans on the exactly. podcast. Like, that's no, a good No one bit. cares. We could do like where no we plan a No one gives a, a shit. I don't know. Maybe. Um, no, but I want to. So the Burger King thing, um, we went in. We made an occasion out of it. Yeah, we ate in the Burger King. We didn't even get it to go. We didn't go through the drive thru We're like, I'm gonna go into this Burger King. I'm gonna get my little burgle. I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna get Andrew's food and bring it to him because he's crippled. That's right. I'm gonna throw out Andrew's trash because he's crippled. That's right. And uh, we're gonna eat. Hey, Andrew, you got a taco. You got a Burger King taco. I wanted to try that as how, it was. How did that? How'd that work out for you? So I felt that the the meat or the the protein that whatever that was tasted like seasoned. Uh, it was mushy. It seemed like a uh, hot dog food. Hot dog Se- food. <laughs> seasoned. And then the, the Burger lettuce. King, if you're listening, we're open to sponsorships. Well, we're here for the Impossible Whopper. Which was delicious. And then the lettuce kind of, it had a, a smell as if it was cleaned with pool water. So I didn't like the taco. I got an iced coffee. Do you think that one of the employees had their morning farts on the lettuce? Is that, was that, you think that's a possibility? <laughs> that taste was not a morning fart taste. <laughs> wow. Mm-mm, no. Um... <laughs> But yeah, um, I got an iced coffee that was, it was like the best not good good. Um, so if you're having I mean, a not nice. good coffee, a not good iced coffee, mm-hmm. this is the best version of that coffee. So it's like lovably bad. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it. That makes sense. It's like, it's tolerable, but you know it's not great. Yeah. All right. But like, I, I didn't go into it with high expectations, so it was better because of that. That's good. Mm-hmm. Brace yourself for the Burger King coffee. Um. So yeah, so... They took our names down. That's interesting. Yes. We had a whole conversation about this. Like, they were like, what's your name? I was like, let me get an Impossible Whopper combo. And they're like, okay, uh, what's your name? And I was like, Frank. And we talked about how this is a Starbucks thing. This is a this is a marketing thing to, uh, to connect with your customer, right? Like, now you know their name. You're going to call out their name. If you go in there four or five times a week, like people do Starbucks, every morning I'm going to go into Starbucks for my morning coffee. Right. This is how you get their name, right? And you're like, hey, I'm going to write your name on the cup. I'm going to call your name out when it's ready. Right. And um, this is a, it's just, it's a thing. It, it makes people feel appreciated and known, and it makes you want to go back to this place because you're like, oh, I just want to go to the Starbucks because they know me there. They know my drink, you know? Right. It's, it gives you this feeling. But we were talking about <laughs> there was a meeting at Burger King. They had the number system. Before this – Number 69 gets called. <laughs> Someone's like, nice. <laughs> nice. And then you go get your food. $5. You get... Um, 
So, uh, me and Marcus said I also had Burger King tonight, five dollar coupon. So, wow, Burger King all around, guys. Burger King yeah. stream official. We also saw like a random couple that you could kind of tell would have never gone to Burger King. Oh, both eating impossible. Yes, waffles. all th- all three of the people, three not including Andrew, yeah. three of the people in the lobby. There was that we were the only ones in there. Yeah, us and two other people. Three of them had had impossible whoppers. It feels like people who have not gone to Burger King in ages suddenly went to Burger King today. And I would love to, I would, I'm actually really interested in like the, the metrics yeah. for like how well Burger King did today. Is Burger, is it a publicly traded company? Burger King? It has to be, be right? right? I'm curious what their stock looks like. Like BKG or something, I bet. I mean, there's no rules I could look. That's true. There's no rules. You're going to have to I keep will, the conversation I was going to take, I was going to, yeah, I'll take point on the fact okay. that we were talking about, I was, I mentioned how like the number system has fewer flaws, right? Like if you're kind of, if you're getting someone's name. If there's two people with the same name, two Roberts, let's say, at a busy time, right. and you're like, hey, Robert, here's your Whopper, and then the next Robert gets an impossible Whopper, right. and then the wrong Robert comes up and gets the meat Whopper, you're just like, oh, well, this is a flaw of using names, right? right? But if you have like numbers and you're like 42, 43, 44, there's always going to be one. There's always going to be one number of that person. No one's number 44 is never going to accidentally take number 49. There can only be 169. Correct. There can only be 169. And uh, so it's interesting that like they would remove a, a numbered system, which is almost which has fewer flaws in it, for something more personal like the the name system that allows you to connect with your with your customers. Because Burger King doesn't really strike me as a place where it's like, hey Steve, welcome back. You're gonna get your regular croissant which with sausage and your hash browns. Today. Well, that and that was the you point know? that we were talking about was okay. So there's a board meeting and they talk about this and they say company wide across we want to connect the board, with these customers. We want to connect everybody from here on out. We're doing names and you know, whatever that takes to implement, they have to add it to the receipts, everything to connect. And to what point, like I just imagine going into a Burger King being like, yeah, they know me here. <laughs> like what? Like at Starbucks, you walk like, in I get like, it. like you John, get your, how you doing? And you're like, uh, and oh, like that to me, do you want, like, here's the I don't want that. sub I was just going to say sub question. Do you want to be the guy that's known at the Burger King? Correct. I don't. I don't, I don't want that. And I'd be like, I'd walk in and I'd be like, oh, no, no. Uh-uh. I'm like making the, Stop. making the cut it off Stop. with the throat, not the, the throat motion. BKC. The stock is BKC, but I. <laughs> Phil, Phil says humans are imperfect. Numbers are imperfect. Confirm Frank is a Cylon. What are you looking for? You're looking for BK's publicly traded stock? Yeah. Maybe they haven't gone public yet. They're just waiting. I don't know. Man. I would be curious to see the numbers because it feels like today would be like a booming day for a, for a Burger King. I know. Can you look on your, can you. Can we you want to Google it? it? Yeah, let's just Google it. All right, we'll Google it. And then when we're doing this podcast and I'm uh, in California and you're here, like, will there be, can we do like a, a, can we share the screen of Google? Like, if we need to do that? If we need to do that? Yeah, it's BKC, Burger King, Burger King Company, I guess. Yeah, so it's- $17 it's, a share. Well, yeah, but in comparison to what? what? We need a graph. Uh, It went up two points today. Okay. Or two point it's two point twenty four percent. Finance dot Yahoo. That's a great site for that. Okay, just yeah, take it easy. Nice. Fine, there we go. I, you know, I don't know about it. I'm a big stock market guy. Yeah, yeah I can I tell. Ever, yeah. I know like the website, you know, Yahoo Finance. It's not a big deal. Look at the click the graph. The graph? This There's one? Like, yeah, but you can do uh do like uh I wanna see full like full screen it? Well, full screen, but I wanna see a month. I wanna see the month. Oh wow. Is this Burger King? This is Restaurant Brands International. I don't know if that's it. Oh damn it. Look, this is too much. I I don't want to. This is well. Uh, okay. Let's we'll look at it afterwards. We'll figure. Oh, that's fine. Don't worry about what, that. What is that. That thing just fell. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. Just keep it going. Yeah, that didn't happen. They can't see it. No one. Yeah, right. That's what I mean. Like when you're listening to this, no one knows that happened until you make them know it. Ha- you have a lot of hair on you. Do you have a cat? Fuck, dude. We, that was the whole point. I don't want them to think that I'm a guy. I don't want them to think that I show up to a podcast with a bunch. He's of got a lot of hair on his shirt, man. Cat fur on my shirt. It's really weird. I, I would imagine a person without pets wouldn't have this much hair on his clothing, but here we are. He's kind of a slob. Oh, God. That's exactly what I didn't want to have. Next, they're going to be like, this guy breathes loud. This Look at this loud breathing cat hair. I just hair took wearing... a drink. I could hear it from Timbuk, yeah. too. I bet your cat was... It, yeah, I don't. I got nothing, but yeah, it was loud. Hard to string that one together. It was rough. So we went to Burger King. That was that. Remember between the farts and the breathing loud and the cat hair, man. I don't know what you got going for me. I don't know, man. I'm not sure. Um, I just like that we have a podcast where we can talk about nothing. It's so much of what we do. It's rewarding because, like, I don't like, I don't like scripted things because I, I always want to go off on tangents. Yes, but I can't do that. 
Unless you just talk about nothing. And we are such tangent people. Uh, and I think that does come, like, you know, we were talking about... Tangent like, people. Tangent Those people. Those are our people. The tangent people are our tangent people. Tangent people. Tangent. What are you doing right now? Going on a tangent. What's that What's that chant you're doing, though? My tangent people chant. You can't say my tangent people chat like like that's just your thing like that's just my thing. Well, I just made it. Has anyone? Have you guys? You guys seen Andrew? Yeah. Have you seen his, his tangent people chat chant? Yeah. That's just a thing he does. Like tangent people. <laughs> I do. There is a known thing about me of I will get stuck. How known is this? Close friends. If I Google it. No. Dang. I'll get stuck. Um, Dean Beach's speech peaches. I have no idea what that is. It's a character that I got stuck in. I will sometimes think about things. Dean Beaches. Speech Peaches. One peach a day will help you speech better. What? Yeah, it's a character. I, Did you so, make this up? Yeah. That's brilliant. Dean Beaches, Speech Peaches. I, no, you don't have to say it again. <laughs> I, I believe you. I, I like that you talk, you're like, wow, that's really smart. And you just repeat it again. You're like, uh huh, Dean Beaches, Speech Peaches. Well, but that's exactly what it is, is me getting stuck. Is There will be these things where I'll think about it. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> And I'll get so stuck in it that I need, it's like Inception where I need somebody to like spin the top to get me out or however that movie works. Well, like Inception? <laughs> yeah. I go too many layers deep in Dean Beaches. Is that why you can't fart, you think? No, it's separate from that. Because you're too deep in the... Biological. It's, this is, this is something else. I was just making a joke, man. You don't have to really scientifically <laughs> I'm like disprove it. Like, no, 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 you don't understand. It's not a metaf- It's not a biological connection. It's not a dream based connection. Okay, man. Whatever. I, I watched a, a show on Amazon. Uh, random, like late night, like Amazon. I don't know why, but you can upload on Prime. Like you can get really independent, like crappy production movies and shows uploaded to Amazon. I think Saturday Night Live made a joke about it. Really? Like I you can you could like so if I made a movie and it was low quality, I could just upload it to Amazon Prime. I think it's much easier to get things on Amazon Prime. Interesting. So I somehow stumble upon an Australian motorcycle documentary about running the Dakar Rally. I don't even know what the Dakar Rally is. It's like an off road it's like a big rally of motorcycles and cars, very uh treacherous rally, a lot of off road components, and like if you win it, it it's just like it's a big automotive endurance thing. Um but it's an Australian team, and literally the whole point of all this is the way that they said motorbike. So they the said, way that they said motorbike? Right. So the documentary, the, the documentary starts, and he's like, yeah, you know, I started off surfing, and then uh, at a young age, I found a motorbike, and uh, motorbike. I started riding it. And it didn't matter what the rest of the documentary was about. <laughs> I was You're stuck. Like, I've gotten everything I've wanted for right now. I got stuck, and it was motorbike 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 and it just kept going and then like i was making breakfast the next day and i'm sitting there and you're just my, walking around the house saying motorbike motorbike and then like there was another word and like razor blade and like oh my god it gets and i get stuck so these little things like uh these words that i hear or is like, it one of those things where like if you say it enough it just loses all meaning it just sounds weird similar but not quite like it's like i become i love it i fall in love with it like i, I heard a man say washington un- unironically Oh God! And now I just say it. No, don't say Washington. But because I heard but him not, say it, and I steal it, I'm like a sponge. Uh, burled peanuts. Burled. Burled peanuts. It's a big thing in Florida. No, it's not. Boiled peanuts are a big thing. In Florida. Yeah, burled peanuts. No, They're that's great. not. That's not your language. I heard someone say it, and I absorbed. Have it you ever like seen that meme, where in one picture? Someone's like the first panel. It's the guy that's like, "I made this," and he's in the second <laughs> panel. He's giving it to the other guy, and then the third panel, the guy he gave it to is like, "I made this." That's you, man. That's literally you right now. You're the guy in the third panel who's like, "These are my borrowed peanuts now." That's right. So from Washington, take that and then combine it with like Dean Beach's speech peaches, where I find like there's I see a jar of peaches and I just think of it. And then there's this character, and then this character, Dean Beach's speech peaches. He's from Washington, and his speech is, his uh, his peaches will help you speech better. And I just get stuck in these things, and I, I need close friends to get me out of them. Because if I don't, I will go too far. And I will have weeks where that's just... I'm going to be honest, thing. I feel like you've gone too far already. I have! You've made terrible mistakes, my friend. It's a podcast about rambling, and I'm rambling about my ramblings. But that's apropos, right? 
I know what that word means, but you should clarify it for the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> should I Google it for you? Yeah, I mean, like, just because if anybody's listening and they can't Google it, they should know. Uh, with reference to your concerning, very appropriate to a particular situation. Ah, that's an apropos S- thing for you to Google. Correct. Me Googling apropos when we're trying to define it is relevant. It's it's apropos to the the nature of our conversation. And the point is, you <laughs> rambling during a pod about nothing during our podcast about nothing. Apropos. Appropriate to the situation. Could we call the podcast apropos? 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 See, now you're becoming the Australian guy with the motorbike, but you're just mispronouncing your your bur- burled peanuts and your Washington with apropos because it's apropos and you're saying apropro and you're putting two pros where there's only one pro. But that's a play on it where we're pros at aproposing. Oh, that's fucking good. Thank you. Apropos. Apropos. We're pro at this. Are we sure that's not an NPR podcast? It might be. That's a, that's a, apro, what about apro bros? Just as good. Oh man. The only, what if the hardest thing about this podcast is just coming up with the right name? What if, because once you come up with it, you're stuck with it. What if the bit of the whole podcast is for the entire duration of us having it? We're just trying to name it. So people are like, like we'll have a hundred episodes, a hundred episodes. We're like, that's it, guys. We're figuring out a name finally. Exactly. But, but like, the, well, we still don't at the end of the And episode. the irony is, like, obviously the show is up. It's live. There is a name. And the whole time we're just trying to name like, it. Like, what if we registered on YouTube? It's what if done we, already, what have we done? Guys, like, it's ha- there. Yeah, it has a name. Franz What if we there. just call it Untitled? No, mm-hmm. I don't like that. It has no name. Mm-hmm. A podcast has no name. A podcast has it. It's a butterfly. It's well, that was a Game of it. Thrones reference, but I don't know if you've ever seen that show. I've never watched Game of Thrones. Oh, Jesus. Well... You know, apro pros. Wow, that's that's fucking good, man. Pro apro bros. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my god, it's gonna it's going too deep right now. It is. Do we leave the Game of Thrones thing alone? Yes, it's too played. It's very played, and also like there's nowhere we can really go. I can make fun of you and be like, I can't believe you haven't seen Game of Thrones, idiot. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not, then, there's no. It's low hanging fruit. Answer, there's no right? reward. What's my, I, I'm either hipster guy. You know guy. you haven't seen it. I, I know you haven't seen it. Like, what are you going to do? You can't watch it right this second. You're right. And and even the answers of why somebody hasn't seen it are all the same. Right. There's I, don't, only, I didn't have like, time. I wasn't interested. You throw a, a dart at a, a, an Nothing. answer board. Unless you were like, well, you see, here's the thing. I wanted to watch it. I really did. But I was stuck at sea for 14 years. And uh, I just now got back. I, I had to ride a shark back to civilization. That would bring value. And to that was, he, the... we, we got into an argument when we came close to shore and it bit me in my leg and that's how I fucked up my femur. Did you see Life of Pi? No, I never did. There's a, there's, I. Are you I, shaming me about that now? Like I shamed you about Game of Thrones? No, Is this no, your not goal? at all. I just, I, I, I think about it. It's. I think, you know, sometimes <laughs> I'll sit there and I'll think about Life of Pi sometimes. I there's just want to reflect. I, it's so easy because like you can Google and like go on Reddit and see people explain any movie and I just haven't. I feel like I want to discuss it with a friend, but there's just a scene where I think I'm like, does that, is, is it that... the tiger scene? Well, like everybody talks about the tiger. I, that's the only one I know. It's just with, with I'd be him like, oh, the movie with the telling, tiger scene. and there's a boat and there's some circumstances and I, I just, I think about I it. I thought you were going to say circumcisions for a second there. They circumcised the boat. Okay. No, that's, they don't. That's how you name a boat. That's what it's called. What is? What's what it's called? Circumcising a boat. You're naming it. I don't believe you. I just made that up. I know. That's not very apro bro of you. <laughs> I don't know. I I thought about Life of Pi. You said riding the shark back. There's nowhere to go with that. It's... I feel like, yeah, this was, I feel like I was, I don't feel like there was really a, a goal here. No. I mean, we didn't, we literally didn't write a format for this. I, I even had suggested as we continue to go with this, we'll, we'll, um, we'll write subjects to cover we did not do that we we purely are we said, gonna do that maybe that doesn't seem very apro bro of us i you're right but i was just thinking you know like because like to be like you know what i've been thinking about this week frank tell me andrew well, if I look at andrew list, bragging about all the movies he's seen <laughs> <laughs> have you seen a academy award nominee life of pi from 2015 it's because i'm insecure about not seeing game of thrones i need to make it up he's like oh shit let me think of a movie he hasn't seen so i can hey have you seen this movie and i'll be like no and you're like yes got him and then he let out a much bigger fart tomorrow morning due to his confidence due to his reclaimed confidence i wish i could get do you it think out. it's a confidence thing the fart yeah 
Maybe you just feel, maybe your body's just like, I'm, no, I'm not confident right now. I think that perhaps the body is trying to avoid pain. I think that when the initial bowel movements were have you, so... Have you pooped since the surgery? Still haven't pooped. It's been a month. There's no way that's true. <laughs> You'd be <laughs> fucking dead. Yeah. You'd be, I was like, but wait, you said it seriously. No, um, I, that's a Lydia poster. Sorry. <laughs> I love, there's a poster on Frank's wall that I really like and I didn't, I didn't know. Um, I was very afraid to poop, uh, for the first bit. And the first poop was two days after in the hospital. And I called my nurses and I, I was very open about it. I had great like, nurses. Hey. And I said, Hey, it's, so it's let's happening. talk about my BMs. I said, it's happening. I said, the like, time has come. <laughs> and it is time. And, and like, I couldn't get out of the hospital bed. Like the leg was better, but it was so Did weak. you shit the bed? No. I, I got up. That was my first getting up. I would have thought and that because of the, 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 the pushing when you were getting up that like you would have just been like, oh, we have liftoff. So I thought they gave me like a, an elevated throne to sit above the toilet, which was <laughs> don't, great. Don't call it a throne. Well, that's what I thought of. That's <laughs> A throne fit for a king. That's right. That's beautiful. And beautiful. I sat on it and it made it much better. So like, thank God for like hospital uh, accommodating weak injured people. I thought that they were going to wipe for me. Katie says, humans care so much about when you poop post-op. It's ridiculous. They do. It's I, true. I was concerned. It's huge. You can't get out of the hospital until because, you Because, like, come, come on. Let's, let's be real. Pooping is a Guinness world record kind of thing where I'm like, I want to know the longest you've gone without pooping. Because, yeah. like, if, you're t- if you tell me, like, get this, buddy. I haven't pooped for 14 days. I would be like... Like, so I want to be like, hey, man, you had surgery on your leg. You were in the hospital. Did you break any poop records? I don't like, think you did. No, I didn't. That's Two sad. Days. But I... You can't leave until you poop. Is that true? It's you, true. They're because, like, sorry, buddy. We got to keep you here like, until you poop. You'll die if you can't poop. Right? This like, is what I'm saying. So it causes so many medical complications. Yeah. And it's also a sign that your body's getting back to normal. So it's, it's very important. Um, so I thought, like, I was like, guys, you're going to be proud of me. Uh, one step closer to healing. Whenever I travel, I never poop. Yeah, that's normal. It, it is normal, but it's so weird to me. Like if I leave, if I leave a place on Thursday, I leave here on Thursday, and I come back on Monday. There are times where Not like all rig. I don't. I'm like, my body just shuts down. It's like, man, we're gonna we're gonna go hibernate for the weekend. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll forget. Like I'll travel, but normally, yeah, I don't know, two or three days, I guess. But yeah, I thought they were going to wipe for me, Frank, because I was so weak. Did you say wipe? Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't think you could have done it. Well, The dude, first time I picked dude. you up when, when I saw you when you got back here, you could barely, like, get your leg out of the car. Yeah. You I were was, like, hey, can you do me a favor and lift under my leg here? And I was like, I yeah, had I anxiety about it. Like, I wanted to come see you. Yeah, but that I shit so... anxiety? No, it was just a, an act. Oh, you're like, what if I, yeah, like. I was, I was so yeah, fragile. You're, it's, it's I, an, I wore it's an a hospital sock. I couldn't even put a shoe on. Yeah. Um, I thought they were going to wipe for me. So. I, I do it and I'm I mean this is a subject I don't know if there's a god I don't know like you know that's a whole other thing but if there is a higher power it blessed me because that first poop was what I like to call a ghost poop where it did not require any wiping and oh clean break it was a clean break a clean break is that's a popular one I that's the that's the that's the that's peak poop. I don't uh, know what I would have done, and because they didn't come in, and I like mustered up the strength to like hit. the Okay, it's not like you said mustard, not m m u s t a r d, not m u s t e r e d. Oh, mustard strength. And you said I mustered up the strength, and I was like, huh. <laughs> it's weird because you were talking about poops and then you talk about mustard, and I'm like, this is not. I pooped mustard. Yeah. So someone actually so, someone said uh. Never mind. Okay. Go ahead. Well, anyway, so I, I, I got the one and it was a ghost poop and I it was the most I've ever believed in a higher power because there was I needed that. I needed that because I did not have the strength. So that was it. That's I forget what we were talking about. <laughs> we were we were talking about it. Oh. I feel like when you say I forgot what we were talking about, it's like, did you black out? You're like well, you just came I, to and you're like, Oh, what was I saying? Well, I didn't. I don't remember what we were talking about that brought us to that subject. I was trying to bring it back to wherever we were going. Probably farts. I think. 
the whole episode. It's just going to be farts. Yeah, this is, we can call this episode the first poop. Yeah. That's a good, I mean. Ah, uh-huh. why not? No, We're that's. We're going to name it something. Yeah. Cool. Friends episode one, the first poop. I remember my wife's first it's... poop. <laughs> I remember my wife's first poop and my Sweetie, wife's favorite poop. Get the camera. <laughs> Breaching. <laughs> You're not allowed to poop until you get married. No, there's no you can because it's you know, but the, there's the first marriage poop, right? Like the oh, first yeah. poop oh, after oh, you get married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's really the one you're that's really the one you're really proud of. That's the one you don't forget. That is a thing. No one forgets their first married poop. Your first married that is a it's real a big deal. thing. Everybody has a first married poop. Do you uh do you have any desire to have uh, a bathroom with two toilets in it? So after you get married you guys can simul poop? No. I'm here for two sinks. Guess it's just me then. I guess I'm the weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me, right? Wow, look maybe way to make me look like an asshole here. Super practical Jeez. idea, but that's fine. I'll just go fuck myself on this one. Guess you could just guess you could just wait like a like an idiot. <laughs> I'm not gonna be the one waiting outside the bathroom when I gotta go. I like the idea of two sinks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm facing each other. <laughs> In the chat, someone asks if the toilets Can are facing. Can you imagine? You're just like, you're just like, hey, I love you. <laughs> oh dear God. So yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. So once the face, what if they're facing away from each other? That seems like it's that seems almost acceptable, right? Like if you have two toilets facing away from each other, like, yep, just coming in. Don't mind me. <laughs> you don't have to look at each other. I, you know, let me tell you something. The most, the most awkward thing about bathrooms is 100% the noise, right? Yeah. If you could be in a bathroom in a soundproof chamber and someone else is in a soundproof chamber, yeah, no awkwardness whatsoever. Once you're in a public bathroom and noises happen, I don't want to see you. <laughs> I want you to, I'm going to wait for you to leave and then I will get out of the stall and leave too. I don't want to like have any sort of interaction with you once you start making noises in the bathroom. If I know what you sound like pooping, I do not want to know what you look like as a person. Uh, so what if... I mean, okay, that's a little extreme. I don't think it has to do with the specific sounds you make. I just don't want the awkward interaction. So I don't want them to come out of the bathroom and then I come out of the bathroom and I'm like, yeah, I, I heard you groaning and farting, buddy. I don't want... like. You don't deserve that. I don't deserve that. Nobody needs to. Nobody needs that. That's a weird. That's such a social thing, right? Because we all, it, it, everybody does. The thing is, like, you probably breathe so heavily that no one can probably hear what you're doing while you're in the bathroom. You know, it's probably you could probably cover up all the sounds. I would imagine. I hate you so Cause, much. Because <laughs> because you're heavy breathing, you know. I notice you have an IKEA fob on your keys. Yes, and that's funny to me. That is for my friends and family discount. You go to it's IKEA a lot. I go like probably at least once a month. Yeah. It's like, you know, you keep like a gym membership. Yeah, it's like, yeah, right. It's like, a, it's free, yeah. but I do go pretty frequently. That's the only fob on your keys. Yeah, that's the only one I go to <laughs> regularly, man. I don't leave the house that frequently. The it's grocery usually Ikea. store. It's just like... <laughs> well, Publix doesn't have a, a keychain membership thing, and neither does Amazon. So, look, I don't know what you want from me, man. <laughs> it was just funny. I just, I just went down a line of thought. It was just funny. I just think you want to take the subject off your heavy breathing. I did, yeah. That's okay. I accept that. <sighs> that's him. I'm drinking. Yeah, that's what I would say too. Oh, I can't. I can't heavily breathe when I got liquid in my mouth. <laughs> you can't hear me because I'm drinking. It's true, but you got a really loud gulp too. So I guess that's that second gulp was louder. I, I heard it. It was audible. Yeah. Well, uh. Do we got anything else? What do we... I mean, I think we always have something else, but... I, that's the problem. How long should these go? About an hour. I think an hour is probably where you want to be. That's a sweet spot, because you don't... Too much longer than an hour, people are going to lose interest, and they're not going to be able to digest it. Right. And anything under, like, a half an hour is just not even... It's too short. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, though... I think that there's something funny. Like, if we were to do, like, an episode that was 20 minutes, and we were just talking about something, like, all right. See you later, guys. Thanks that's kind of, listening. like, a funny bit. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, I guess, like, an hour. That's probably... What do we, yeah, we're like 52 minutes. It seems about right. What if, have you ever, uh, when someone else is in a stall next to you, have you ever gone up and sat on the, sat on the toilet and looked over into their stall? Dude, no, what? No. <laughs> yeah, but me neither. 
<laughs> I was asking for my friend. That'd be weird, right? Said that. Totally weird, right? Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I... Uh, maybe I've giggled. Maybe like I'll No hear, way have you giggled in the bathroom. Maybe I'll like... At your own noises or at someone else's? Someone else's. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's the you know what's the best is because usually when you're in the in the bathroom and there's someone else there up until the point they make a noise it's dead silent right you could hear a pin drop in a bathroom mm-hmm. and then someone just farts in a stall next to you and you can tell like you're like this guy's not having a good time right and it's so hard to laugh like it's like bite your <laughs> hand hard to laugh because well, like, you don't want to be the guy like I don't want to be laughing at you mm-hmm. you're just doing what we're all here to do man you're not you're in the right place. You know, you're doing you're doing the thing. Mm-hmm. But come on, it's a fart, man. Are you the kind of person that uh, won't defecate in a public restroom? I will not, unless I'm unless I'm like, unless I'm, unless we're at ground zero and I am we're gonna have an accident. Otherwise, I will just I'll be I'll, I'm like I'm waiting this out. See, that's so funny to me because we're talking all about this and all these things register to me. I will, I will get to my business just about anywhere. No, it. Honestly, lock optional. Because, like, everyone's like, oh, that'd be so embarrassing. And I'm like, it's more embarrassing for you. Like, you don't want to be the guy that walks in on guy pooping. I don't know. I'm a big fan of single occupancy bathrooms. They're great. That's ideal. Yeah. That's where I want to be. If it's a stall, not happening. I can just run. Well, because, like, I'm going to be honest. Pooping's not that urgent for me. Like, I can just be like. True. I'm not at a point where, like. If the train's coming, like, it's got, you gotta let it pass. Like, I could just be like, I'll just wait. Makes me think of a funny story. I'm listening. It better be funny. So, I was on tour at the time, and I was, I was 20, I want to say it was my 23rd birthday. And we're in Salt Lake City. It's a good and city. our friends from another tour, like, happened to play a show at the same time. And I really wanted to impress my friend. There was this taco cart that I thought was the best tacos. And I was going to be like, dude, you haven't heard of this taco cart? Like, I wanted to be the guy to be like, oh. Like, Yo, you, you, you're, the, you're the guy that points out the yeah, hot spots. Like, I'm you're so like, cool. buddy, I'm, I'm so familiar with this area that yeah, I know this taco cart is so banging. Much. Yeah, I tour so much that I didn't even know the taco cart. I know this area so well. That guy. You were that guy. So, I don't think anyone likes that guy. No. I you mean, make other guys feel inadequate. You're like, oh. I was young. Yeah, was, no, we've all been that guy. Yeah. But I think ultimately we realize that guy is kind of off-putting. You like that guy when he's they, trying too hard. You like that guy when they empower you. When they say, "Yo, like Loki, go check this spot out." But they're they're not trying to be that guy. You like that guy when they when they add value to your trip. Right? If they're like, "Hey, I know you like this kind of food. Mm-hmm. Let's go to this place. I think it's really good." Yep. Because they're they're then they're then they're thinking of you. Yeah. And not trying to make themselves look good. Exactly. But it Loki does make them look good it's, because they're thinking it's of a you. Silent hero. It's a silent hero. I was not being that guy. Oh boy. And I was trying to show off. I was trying to say, hey, look, look how cool this taco cart is. It was late at night. And they were like, Andrew, this is terrible. No. Well, great, great. Yeah, I'm sure they the tacos are still fine. But as you know, and as we talked about with Dan's, I do not like spicy food. Oh, God. This he does not. I can't do it. I'm very bad at it. It was I like Cholula. Up. Woo, this is toasty. I, literally, I can't eat Cholula sauce. So it was late at night. What I thought was like just a very mild salsa was like the last salsa there and it was not it was spicy and i couldn't be the guy that didn't like his own recommendation (laughs) you go there and you're like this taco place is great and you're like oh god i can't couldn't do that no you gotta swallow i was trying to look cool your pride is online buddy of my birthday we're celebrating they were in a bigger band than hey man why did you recommend this place if you don't even like the food clearly that would have been the worst yeah you don't want to be that guy no so i eat it i tough it out and i eat it and it was good but it was way too hot so the night goes on and honestly like I don't drink too too much and I never really have but it was the night of my birthday and I had a couple beers so I've never seen you drink yeah it's not that I don't drink it's just rare I don't care but I had Same. a couple beers I ate that very spicy taco and you had one taco maybe two but if well, were they equally as spicy because I feel like after you have the first spicy one going for the second spicy one just seems like a bad idea right so I guess it probably would have been too because you put the you can't salsa order, on you can't yourself. Be like, oh, one taco. Exactly. And I would have ordered and then accidentally ruined them with the salsa together. And then, of course, I wasn't going to not eat them in front of him. Yeah, so it was at least two, maybe three. <laughs> and also, no one gets one taco. I want to be real with you. No, you never do that. So we eat them. The night wraps up. 
and we're touring in a van and we had built bunk beds in the back row. So instead of the fourth row, you have bunk beds which lay the same direction and the bottom one um, was very closed off. Like it was like covered by a bench, whatever. So I go to sleep that night and I wake up and we're driving from Salt Lake City to Denver and I wake up early in the morning Denver, happen to in place. my own fart. Um, <laughs> Did you say ironically? Well, yeah, because we, we talked no. about that earlier. Fittingly. Apropos, my friend. Apropro. Apro bro. Bro pro bo. However, I, you know, this was on. not like a normal morning. This was poisonous. It was evil. It was a bad one. And I wake up. I'm listening. And I I yell to Max, who is driving, and I'm like, Max, we need to stop. We need to st- I just knew. I was like, this is a poop. This is a poop. This is a poop. Guys. <laughs> There's this a poop. Is, this is not just a casual moment. <laughs> Nature's calling. So we, uh, I yell to him to pull over. At first, he doesn't hear me. I call him on my cell phone. And I'm like, Max. In the same. Because yeah, I was yelling and it was, it was, everyone else was asleep and I was in the back. He was driving. I call him. And I'm like, Max, this is an emergency. Couldn't you have gotten up and just went to like the driver? I couldn't move. Well, that's were, how bad it was. You were going to shit if you got up? Yes. That's how bad it was because the salsa you... and the spice and everything that my body wasn't used to. But how did you get out of it? How did these, how's he going to get out of this one, guys? That's exactly it. So I'm like, uh, and he's like, the next rest stop isn't for 10, 15 miles. We're in the middle of nowhere. Oh, Jesus. So I'm sitting there and like, I, I can't You're move. Done, I'm, I'm, I'm just praying. I'm just in the fetal position. Just like. I can't have the first memory of because, being 23 years old. Because we have old. any buckets on the vet. All because of you wanted to show off with your tacos. I know. And I was like, I couldn't, I could not have being like, oh yeah, I remember how I turned Let me tell you something, buddy. Pride goeth before the fall, Andrew. Yeah. Your hubris. So, I was like, I can't be 23 and have my first thing be shitting my and, pants. And yet here you are. You're like, happy birthday to me. So I power through. And he finally Were stops. Were you sweating? Did you have the sweats? Yeah. And That's rough. He finally stops. I, I don't even know. I, I, the way that I think about it is I must have run into that gas station. Like, you know the scene in Jumanji where Robin Williams comes out of Jumanji and he's like, what year is it? I was in Jumanji. Kind of, yeah. That was me in the, in the gas station. I was like, where's the bathroom? I was in Jumanji. I run. Barely make it. Make it. And that was... That's the story. Can I tell you a funny? Can I tell you a funny, uh, a little, a little antic, a funny little uh, tangent about the human body, right? You know what the worst moment is when you really have to go to the bathroom? What? Once you get into the bathroom, (laughs) and let me tell you why. (laughs) Because the human body somehow knows you can hold it for a half an hour, forty-five minutes, however long you need to hold it. Once you get into the bathroom, your body's like. Now it's time. We can go. But you still have to undo your belt. You have to undo your pants. You have to take your pants off. You have to turn around. You have to sit down. But for some reason, your body loses that. that Your body is like, no, no. I know this place. This is the bathroom. It's time. I can let go now. But like once you're undoing like your pants and stuff, you're getting your belt off. Like you got to pull your pants down. All that stuff. That whole moment is miserable. Because you've somehow lost the same strength to hold these things back as you had before you shut the door. The defenses have, the, the walls have gone down. For some reason, instinctually, your body knows once you're in the bathroom, we can let go now. You know, I feel like I've needed a platform to talk about my bathroom thoughts. Pavlovian response. Poor body can't handle it. That's true. It's a Pavlov, yeah, it's a Pavlovian situation where like your body hears that bell in there and you're like, I know that it's a safe zone now. Yeah. I can let go. That's right. And you're like, no, just give me four more seconds, please. Yeah. Because I'll have to go to the bathroom. I'll have to pee, let's say. So I'll be like, I'm holding it fine. I'm holding it fine. Once I get into the bathroom and I'm undoing my belt, like, it's almost, I'm I'm literally at the point where I'm going to pee myself at that moment. I, oh, it's really? almost like impossible to hold back because like. It's normally a number two for me. It's happened with both, mm. right? Like, because for some reason, once you get to the place where it happens, it's just, it's time. That's it. Yeah. Your yeah. body's like, hey, look, man, I try, I, I've held off for as long as I can. I know, I know what happens in this room. I'm just going to take it easy from now on. You ever peed yourself? I have not. No, not in my adult life that I can ever recall. I, I can't really think of adult life, but I remember a very. <laughs> and your butt starts drooling. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I remember being a, a child, but in my mom's car and 
I just had to pee so bad. And I told her, I was like, mom, I can't hold it. And she didn't listen to me. And I, I, that's the, I'm like, why aren't you just, is it just take me to the bathroom? However, here we go. I peed myself and it was such a, it was a, a conscious, this is happening now. Oh, you were like, this was your first punk rock experience. That's right. We we're like, fuck the man. Fuck the man. I'm peeing right now. It honestly felt great. You know what's the worst? When you when you were home from school, when your parents kept you home from school, or like when you wanted, you weren't feeling good. Mm -hmm. But then your parents are like, do you have a fever? And you're like, no, I don't feel good. And they're like, well, if you don't have a fever, you got to go to school. And I'm like, <laughs> why? That's not the only indicator of sickness. That's I'm like, only. what if I shit myself right now? Like, well, because I don't have a fever, I'm still going? Food poisoning, a cough, allergies. Uh, uh, My stomach could literally feel terrible, but yeah. that's not going to be indicative. Like, I, don't, I never understood like... Hey, buddy. It's just the fever. Well, yeah, right. Like, if I if I don't have a fever, I'm I'm fine, right? Like, that's so weird that that's the only indicator of sickness when you're a kid. Yeah, that is funny. I always, always like my mom. I'm like, oh, I don't feel good at all, but she's going to ask me if I have a fever. I'm not going to have one. And I'm just going to have to go. Yep. I'm just going to have to go to school. <laughs> and it never made sense to me. I never understood it as a child. And I was like, maybe this is one of those things I'll grow up and I understand. I'm like, still don't. It still makes no sense to me. Yeah, that is funny. There are so many things from school when you go back and think about it. Insults. Right. Why did that matter? Right. School is super surreal. Like, it's a weird experience. Like, elementary school, middle school, stuff like that. It's all very weird. I don't know why my parents let me dress myself in school. I don't know why my parents dressed me. Because, like... You were better neither, off. Neither one of us had any sense of style whatsoever. But you're not supposed to, right? Like, you're just supposed to wear, like, the cutest shit. You're like, hey, Snoopy shirts and transformers shirts and like you know totally but like i had like a mesh tank top phase that they just let happen like a what like a yeah, like a like just like these we like almost like sports jerseys but they were just like what's his name from uh from 50 first dates i don't remember that like doug is it doug from 50 first dates let's look we have the internet we're using the internet right now for the listeners like this, man? Honestly, yeah. <laughs> Similar to Doug. Like a fishnet shirt? Yeah, yeah. Similar to Doug. <laughs> like, a, like a first... Uh... Oh, wow. I really... I, I think I peaked that when I yelled. I hate that. I hate seeing oh, I'm that sure you did. Form. I hate that. I hate it when it gets the red. Uh, it makes me cringe. Damn it. Yeah. Doug. The closest I've come to peeing myself is when I raced into the bathroom and was on the brink of peeing myself. I got my pants down and sat down on the toilet and the toilet lid was down and being on the top of the toilet and all over. No. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know. Would you count that as being yourself? No. I don't think so either because you made it. By all intents and purposes, you made it. Yeah. You were in the right place, in the right position, and your clothing was in the right... Like, everything was correct except for the toilet seat, which is not an extension of you. Yeah. This is an external force, an external totally. factor that you have yeah, no that, control that's, over. I, I'm not counting. I would give that a pass. That's a pass. I don't know, Frank. What do you think? Did we do the first episode? This is great. I feel like we did the first episode. I, you could, I, I feel like we could tell when we hit a stride on a topic, and it was very nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can tell. You can feel it. And you're like, you this is good. You can feel it, yeah. The, the, the things I'm saying right now feel natural. I don't feel forced. Your brain turns off, and you're just yeah. ripping. It was mostly the poop and the and the pee and the farts, I think. That was really where we hit our stride. It's easy to talk about going to the bathroom. The funny thing is, I like talking about it because it's not a thing I talk about regularly in public. And I, one of the things I wanted to do with this podcast was talk about stuff that we talk about in the confines of our friendship or like in public yep. with friends, but you never really get a chance to talk about it with an audience. And I know mm -hmm. it's the best part about it is that everyone's fucking thinking about it. Yeah. You're going to listen to this and you're going to be like, I've done that. Mm -hmm. I've totally done that. I know that feeling. And that's cool. Yep. That's a cool feeling. I like that. And I hope you guys will agree. And I hope you guys will let us know what you think. Yeah. And if you guys are like, I can't listen to you guys because all you talk about is shit and farts and peeing yourself. Gotta, yeah, but like... We're, that's not going to be the case always. We can be smart too. Okay, let's slow down. Okay. It's nice to have a platform to talk about nothing. I agree. And it's like one of the things I want to do is talk about stuff that people, everyone... One of the best things about Seinfeld and even Curb Your Enthusiasm is that it's a sh there's shows about nothing, but there are also shows about things that everyone thinks everything. and no one says. Yes. And I want to I want to say them. I like that. I strive to do that. Let's do it. Cool. Let's say those things. They're here to be said. Next time we'll talk about more of your bodily functions. Cool. Yeah. I've Thank got... you guys for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this. 
you can find us on iTunes and Stitcher and Spotify soon, hopefully, as long as we find a name. It's probably going to be Franz or Apro Bros or Apro Pros, something along that nature, but it's we'll figure it out and we'll let you guys know. I still think it's a funny bit to be trying to name it the whole time. But we yes, it is. It is a funny bit. But we still have to legitimately have a name to register it to the sites. Yeah, let's just call it Franz and then just I like that. Figure it out. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh well cool. Um I follow us or something? Is that Do all the things, follow all the things. Follow us on 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 Twitter, on Facebook, wherever. You can yeah. find us pretty easily. We'll yeah. also be making pages and stuff. We'll make like a Twitter account. Okay. Whatever. Sweet. We'll make a gram account. Whatever you want to do. Um, I don't think you can switch easily between the gram accounts though, right? No, you can. Oh, well. It's then. just a whole thing. It's a whole ordeal. I didn't make one for where all my friends cuz I feel like it's, they care about us. Like we don't need to make a whole page. That's true. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Right. There's no rules. Well, here's my here's my issue. If they follow me because they like the podcast, they're yeah. going to get a bunch of magic bullshit. Oh, yeah. And then for right? me, it's a bunch of music. Right. Because our podcast is not connected to our, our, our brand. Nobody wants our pesky professions Correct. getting in the way of our banter. But they do if they're those things. But this is not. This is an extension of, of – this is a completely different thing. That's right. You know? We're secret agents. So anyway, thank you guys for listening. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll find out. We'll, we'll, we'll update you next week on what's going on, I'm sure. And uh, hopefully this is a weekly thing that we can continue. And thank you guys for everything. Yeah. Thanks for listening. We'll see you later, guys.